People are refusing to pay their mortgages in a growing protest that threatens the very existence of the Chinese Communist Party. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. There is a protest growing right now in China. I know I'm going to have to be more specific. The number of things to protest in China could fill up a binder the size of a cheesecake factory menu. Is that a menu or an encyclopedia? But this growing protest could destroy the Chinese Communist Party. Despite years of the big Wall Street investment firms like BlackRock saying you should triple your investment in China, it's becoming pretty obvious that there is something seriously wrong with the Chinese economy. By the way, something seriously wrong with the economy is only in the appetizer section of the things to protest in China menu. One in five of China's urban youth can't find a job. But perhaps the biggest warning sign is the real estate crisis. The property sector alone accounts for about 30% of China's GDP. So if that goes down, the Chinese Communist Party will face serious problems, possibly even collapse. The party's legitimacy is not based on any kind of high ideals like freedom and democracy. It's based on providing money and jobs to the people, as long as they agree to an authoritarian police state. But when the economy is bad, the party's rule is unstable. It's kind of like if that one kid we all knew growing up who only had friends because he had a trampoline destroyed his trampoline. That was the only thing you had going for you, bud. And now the real estate crisis is threatening the economy. The problem is real estate developers pre-sold homes. In other words, people paid for apartments before they were built. The developers were supposed to use that money for construction. 90% of all homes in China are pre-sold. 90%. I'd say that's like putting all your eggs in one basket, but it's more like paying for the eggs and the basket before the chickens laid the eggs. Heck, even before the tree was chopped down to make the basket. The problem is, in many cases, developers never actually finished construction. The German media company DW sent a team to China to report on this, and the scale is mind-blowing. Well, one of the things that's really extraordinary here and really gives you a sense of the scale of the problem is this whole road is lined with unfinished buildings, one after the other, as far as the eye can see. A whole row of things that were paid for despite never finishing what was previously started. What is this, my bookshelf? I swear I'll finish one of those books someday. And what does this mean for the people who have already paid good money for those unfinished apartments? Well, DW also interviewed someone who bought one of these apartments. I bought the apartment in 2018. It was agreed it would be ready in 2020. But they stopped work in 2019, and they're still not working on it now. The apartment has been left to rot ever since. It was wise of him not to reveal his name or face. Otherwise, he may have also been left to rot after being moved to another permanent home. And not only did people lose the money they spent on an unfinished apartment, they had to pay their mortgage on it too. Are people upset? You bet. And they're protesting. This is not good for the Chinese Communist Party. More after the break. Welcome back. People have spent a lot of money on apartments they're very likely to never live in because they were never built. And they're still paying money on the mortgages for those unfinished apartments. That'd be like still paying a music instructor two years after your kid gave up piano lessons. Although to be fair, I'd pay my neighbors to make sure their kid never resumes those lessons. If I hear chopsticks one more time, I'll go nuts. People became fed up. And back in June, a very dangerous protest began. People began boycotting their mortgages. And despite a desperate attempt by the Chinese regime to censor any mention of the mortgage protest online, the movement has only grown. GitHub is a popular file-sharing website. People can use it to post documents. This GitHub list is called We Need Home. It shows the number of real estate projects across China whose buyers have joined the mortgage boycott. 
There are now 342 projects on this list, meaning the number of individual buyers boycotting could be in the tens of thousands. And with no sign of construction picking up at many projects, and no clear guidance from local authorities, more home buyers have told Reuters they plan to join others who have stopped paying mortgages. Would you look at that, it turns out you can't get paid millions of dollars for doing basically nothing and providing no service whatsoever to society. Unless, of course, you're a Kardashian. There is a lot at stake here for the Chinese Communist Party. Home prices have declined 12 months in a row. According to Citigroup, at banks, the proportion of bad loans related to property has surged to 30%. If these unfinished projects don't get completed, there are over $43 billion worth of loans at stake. That's 6% of all mortgages in China. And even the CCP doesn't have enough <clears throat> public housing for all these protesters. And with a major meeting of the Chinese Communist Party in October, this is a really bad time for such a potentially devastating protest. Well, a bad time for the CCP. That's why the party has been heavily censoring the mortgage boycott. Heavy-handed censorship is one of the downsides of a communist system. But here's another. One Chinese home buyer told Reuters, the government is focusing on social stability, and it's not thought about solving the problem of unfinished projects. There's nothing we can do if the government doesn't help us. Imagine that. Nothing you can do unless the government helps you. That's what communist systems do. They take away the power of the individual, making them totally dependent on the government. All you can do is beg for them to take care of you. You know, I was wrong earlier. This is more like if that one kid we all knew growing up, who only had friends because he had a trampoline, destroyed his trampoline, and everyone was forced to stay at his Chinese Communist birthday party. Now that the problem has become so widespread and catastrophic, authorities are putting on a show of helping. Authorities in Zhengzhou, where the mortgage protests began, are offering home buyers loan payment holidays for up to six months and pledges to expedite construction. Which is a bit of a shallow gesture, since they're basically saying people that stopped paying their mortgages can stop paying their mortgages. It's like catching your spouse cheating on you and saying, you know, I'm now offering to be in an open relationship. But They've also promised to start building the stalled housing projects. Where will the money come from to start building? Why, from issuing more debt. Banks are being forced to give out loans. Beijing is making about $1 trillion worth of government funds available for construction projects. The problem is that could increase inflation, which is already pretty bad. So people won't be able to afford homes that aren't ever going to be built anyways. No wonder the things to protest in China menu is so thick. But hey, at least the Communist Party is giving people a six-month moratorium on their mortgage payments. After all, you can't protest by not paying your mortgage if the government gives you six months where you don't have to pay. Then you're just following the government's orders. Well, here's the catch. One person told Reuters after the six months are up, he would have to pay the due installments in one go when the moratorium ends, regardless of the state of construction, which was yet to commence. He says if the construction is not done after those six months, he will boycott his mortgage again. But the Communist Party's patience for that is running out. Already local authorities are telling people not to travel to Beijing to appeal to the central government. Local authorities are rewarded for keeping things quiet and punished for letting dissent grow. One person Reuters spoke to was getting a lot of calls from police. In fact, she produced a phone log that police had called her 15 times in one day earlier this month. Sooner or later, that will be an invitation to drink tea. Such thoughtful, caring people, Chinese police. And since YouTube keeps age-restricting or demonetizing our episodes, the only reason we can keep making this show is thanks to contributions from viewers like you on Patreon or Locals. I call them the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. And as a thank you, I answer their questions at the end of episodes. Today's question comes from Drowning Goldfish on Patreon. I wonder which kills more, COVID or simply living in China amid numerous other issues, such as pollution or gutter oil, fake food, tofu dreg buildings, shaky skyscrapers, collapsing bridges, 
The list goes on and on. Oh, why, drowning goldfish? I would definitely say those other things kill more people in China than COVID. According to official statistics, there's only been about 5,200 deaths since the pandemic began. In fact, from April 2020 to March 2022, China reported no deaths from COVID at all, which is almost as believable as Michael Jackson's marriage. They only started reporting a few deaths during the Shanghai outbreak because they couldn't keep those covered up anymore. But their death toll was still suspiciously low. And then after the Shanghai lockdown ended, boom, no COVID deaths again. So even a communist official would have to admit that those other things kill more people than COVID since basically no one dies from COVID in China. Unless, of course, those COVID numbers are lies. Somehow I don't think they'd admit that. If they did, they'd get stuck in a logic loop and their head would explode. Which is something else that apparently kills more people in China than COVID. Then again, cognitive dissonance is par for the course under communism. Thanks for your question and your support, Drowning Goldfish. And thank you for watching. If you want to support China Uncensored, head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored or chinauncensored.locals.com. Links are below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.